So today's lesson is coming from chapter 3, which is titled Interdependence and the Gains from Trade. In this chapter, we start to look at how, number one, the world is connected in this global economy that exists, and number two, how this is beneficial with respect to trade. And some of the theories that garner the notion that through trade we can actually experience increases in our ability to produce. All right, so let's get right into it. Today we're going to start off with a scenario, a situation, which looks at two men. And these two men live alone on an isolated island. To survive, they must undertake a few basic economic activities like water carrying, fishing, cooking, shelter construction, and maintenance. You've got a young guy who's really, really strong, and you've got an older guy who's kind of weak. So the young guy, he can gather 60 coconuts every hour, or in the same hour, he could actually catch 20 fish. The older man in an hour can gather 20 coconuts or can catch 10 fish. So you can see here, we can connect this to the trade-offs that we've looked at before and say that if the young man chooses to gather coconuts, he's going to give up the opportunity to catch 20 fish while the older man is going to also have a certain opportunity cost that exists. The easiest way to look at these questions if you get these on the AP exam or on the end of course test is to actually put them into a table. All right, now there's two fundamental things we can draw from this particular table. Number one, we can look at these two people, the young man and the old man. Number two, we can look at the, what they're actually uh, producing. Okay, so we can see here that we've plugged in the information that we just read through. And what we would say is that because the young man has the ability to maximize more output on the island in all phases, in the coconut production and fish production, that this young man has what we call an absolute advantage. He is just absolutely better than the, the older man. He can do this stuff and one of the things that we look at when we look at this scenario instinctively is that we might say that the young man doesn't really need the old man. Uh, he can produce much more than the old man. He can more than double the output of coconuts and fish. So why bother with the old man, right? Why even deal with him? And so this is begs the age old question. Should the young man self-sustain? Should he self-sustain or should he, you know, connect with this old man and, and can there be any benefits from this connection? So this would kind of be like the United States being the young man, where we have an absolute advantage in just a lot of production of a lot of different things. Why would we as a, a nation choose to deal with or trade with nations that are inferior to us? Well, this boils down to what's called comparative advantage. This is still possible to benefit from trade with other nations, even if you have an absolute advantage over those. Okay, now let me show you how to figure these out. And what we're going to do is we're going to use two different methods we talked a little bit about in class already. One is called the output method and one is called the input method. The output method is when we have the, we're talking about the production of goods and services, the final production of goods and services. In other words, in this example, it says we have a total production of coconuts or a total production of fish. That is, we are looking at how much of something is being produced. We'll talk about the input method in a second. This method, we're going to refer to this as the OGO method, which really means other goes over. Okay, It's an other goes over method, or output goes over, if you want to think about it that way, too. So with the OGO method, what we're trying to determine is what's called per unit opportunity cost. See, we can see how much total opportunity cost there is for each of these people with respect to the production of one good versus another. In other words, 60 coconuts or 20 fish. A little division will help me do this. And here's how we do it. We're going to take the total cost over the total production. Total cost over the total production. So what does that mean? All right. Essentially with this, we're going to take numbers from one column and put them over the numbers from the other column. So it's kind of like if we looked at it, we're going to take these numbers and put them over these numbers. And then we're going to turn around and do the same thing the other way. We're going to take these numbers and put them over these numbers. Total cost over total production, meaning if I was to produce 60 coconuts, it would cost me 20 fish. So I'm going to put the cost of that over the total production of what I could produce. Now, 
when I do this, this is going to give me per unit opportunity cost. So let's go ahead and do the first one. Um, and you guys can fill this in as you go as well. If you're not filling it in, you could just take note of it when you use when you do your quiz online. Okay. So we're going to take the 20 and go ahead and put it over the 60. 20 over the 60. And what that's going to break down is to a third in terms of just basic division. What does this mean? This means that every time the young man collects one coconut, it costs him one-third of a fish, or it is equal to his ability to produce one-third of a fish. All right, let's do the next one. Let's go to the old man. We're going to take this 10, put it over the 20, and we can see that breaks down to a half of a fish. What does this mean? This indicates that for the old man, every time he collects one coconut per unit, opportunity cost, one coconut, it costs him one half of a fish, or it is equal to his ability to produce a half a fish. It's either or. It's the trade-off, the opportunity cost. Now over here, we're going to figure out the young man's opportunity cost in terms of fish production. So we're going to take the, again, total cost when he focuses on fish over the total production, 60 over 20. And that breaks down to three coconuts. So every time he collects a fish, it costs him the opportunity to produce three coconuts. Old man, every time he collects a fish, it costs him the opportunity to collect two coconuts. All right. So this is a real easy trick that you can use, and it works every time. Okay. If we want to look at this visually. So I have over here the uh, opportunity cost. One coconut for the young man costs a third of fish right here. One coconut costs a third of fish. The young man, one fish, costs three coconuts. And for the old man, one coconut costs half a fish. That's where we got this information here. And one fish costs two coconuts. You can also look at it visually here. And hopefully this makes a little bit of sense. Here's the young man. The young man, when he produces one coconut, costs him a third of a fish. The old man, when he collects a coconut, costs him a half of a fish. So the young man's actually better comparatively when we relate the two in the production of coconuts. Let's look down here. When the young man produces one fish, it costs him three coconuts. Again, either fish or coconuts. In this case, one fish costs him the opportunity to produce three coconuts. The old man, when he produces a fish or catches a fish, it costs him the opportunity to collect two coconuts. Again, who gives up more? In this case, the young man gives up more. That must mean that the old man has a comparative advantage. So who do we want to produce which item? That's what we're going to look at next. But visually, you can see this. Again, the young man gives up less fish when he produces a coconut than the old man. And the old man gives up less coconuts when he produces a fish than the, than the young man. So what we would say here is that the young man has a comparative advantage in collecting coconuts. That's why I have this highlighted. Because he gives up less fish when he collects coconuts relative to the old man. Or we could look at it as his per unit opportunity cost is lower. So if we were looking at these two people and we said, who should focus on what, it makes sense that the young man should focus on the production of coconuts versus the old man. Because he gives up less. Okay. Fish production. Who has the comparative advantage here? The old man has a comparative advantage because he actually gives up less coconuts when he catches a fish than the young man, comparatively. And subsequently, we see in this example that one person actually has a comparative advantage in one of the products, the other person has a comparative advantage in another product. What we would like to look at in this example is ultimately how can these two benefit when they specialize in one, the production of one good, and then they trade. Let's look at another example. This is what we're going to call an input question. Input questions are going to be dealing with the factors of production. Like, for instance, how many laborers does it take to produce one good? How many acres does it take to produce one good? How much time does it take to produce one good? And so what we have here is an input question. It takes the young man one hour to produce a coconut, the old man three hours to produce a coconut. Now this question is mutually exclusive from the other one. So just disregard all the stuff we talked about on the previous table, and let's just focus on this one. Okay, it takes the young man two hours to collect a fish, 12 hours for the old man. So who is faster at co collecting coconuts and fish? The young man. The young man can produce it faster. He only takes an hour or it takes two hours with respect to the production of these goods. 
the old man takes a lot longer. But once again, they're on this island, so can they benefit from each other? Yes, they can. All right, so now here's the input method. For the input method, we actually have to turn this thing around a little bit. We're going to use what's called the IOU method, or input goes under method, the IOU. Input, other, under. So meth this method shows, again, the opportunity cost of production per unit opportunity cost when we take the total production over the total cost. We flip this around in terms of our division. Okay, so it's kind of like now we're going to take these numbers and put them under these numbers. Or likewise, take these numbers and put them under these numbers. Again, when you're dealing with the input method, IOU, input, other, under. All right, so here we go. If we take the... Uh, we take the numbers from here, so two hours, and put it under this one hour, and then we do the same thing over here, right? So we take this one hour and put it under this two hour, and then we take this 12 hour and put it under this three hour, and likewise this three hour and put it under the 12 hour. Uh, we can see that our per unit opportunity cost in the production of coconuts and fish is clear in the box. For the young man, when he produces one coconut, it costs him a half of a fish. When he produces, for the young man, when he produces one fish, it costs him two coconuts. The old man, when he produces one coconut, it costs him a fourth of a fish, and one fish costs him four coconuts. So we're still looking for the lower number here, because that's the one that should focus and specialize on that particular good. And see who has the comparative advantage. We can see that for the young man, in this example, uh, when he produces one coconut, let's start with coconuts, when he produces one coconut, it costs him a half of a fish. The old man, when he produced a coconut, cost him a fourth of a fish. Well, a fourth is less than a half. So as a result, the old man should produce the coconuts. And then over here, the fish, it costs the young man two coconuts, where it costs the old man four coconuts. The young man gives up less. Therefore, he should be the, doing the production of the, uh, of the fish. Okay, so that's an introduction to comparative and absolute advantage using the output and the input method. We'll talk more about this in class.